Lots of the Fallen is a very challenging game. I already have around 50 hours played in this game and there are many things that I wish that I knew earlier to make my playthrough that much more enjoyable. There are many things, many mistakes that I wish that I hadn't made because yeah, I mean, the gist of everything and the difficulty on this game, sadly, unfortunately, it is going to be on game world exploration. Once you have managed to tackle the game world exploration that much better, you're going to enjoy this game so much more once you learn to know about the mechanics. So we're going to be dividing this in two main things, oh, the things that advice that are going to help you with the general flow of the game, and then Umbro. Now, Umbral is ideally the one that I think that it's the place that gave me more issues before I actually understood how to take advantage of Umbral. So that said, let's begin with the mistakes that uh, you are making, that you're probably making, that I was making when I began playing Lords of the Fallen. First of everything, the rally system that we have for blocking. Uh, first, I was afraid of blocking because of how much damage you receive. You receive quite a lot of damage, but that damage is recoverable. The one thing that you need to know about this is that you cannot die. You, and it's a little bit more forgiving than it is on Lysopy and Bloodborne. I wouldn't even say that it was a rally system that much because in Bloodborne it is required for you to be very frenetic about everything. You are going to lose all of your health, which is withered, that is the mechanic that it's called in here. But to take advantage of it, whenever you have stamina and whenever you're blocking your damage properly, you cannot die. And you can re regain it very fast, actually. So it doesn't really matter the kind of weapon that you're using, if you're dual wielding, if you're using a two-handed weapon. Always be sure to be blocking, because all of that damage, you can retain it whenever you want. So do not be that afraid. Yes, you can potentially just <laughs> be one shot it if you're not careful. But the rally system here is a little bit more forgiving because you can decide when are you going to be using that window of opportunity to strike back against the enemy to regain all of that health back. And it, ideally it is a nice idea to just stay behind the shield uh, while you are trying to learn the patterns of the enemy. Just be sure not to run out of stamina and not to get staggered while you're blocking because if you get staggered you can potentially get, get one shot in. But all of that health you can regain it very easily very fast. Your throwables. Your throwables, they cannot be upgraded. They are always going to be amazing. They are always going to be scaling out of your main stat. So you should be using throwables depending on the kind of character class that you, are, that you are. And you are going to get increased depending on how much you level that one stat that rules that throwable that you are using. But uh, at any given time, you can also use ammunition pouches to regain them and they deal tremendous amounts of damage provided that you are leveling them properly with your main damage dealing stats. That said, there's many, way too many enemies. One of the most annoying things about this game is the amount of uh, distance enemies. The distance that you can throw these throwables as well is actually quite long and the kind of lock on system mechanic you can lock on into enemies from quite a very long distance. So if you're having issues with long range distance enemies be sure to stack up on throwables or with your spells depending on the kind of class that you are you can deal with them this way. Consumables! Those many things that we always like to hoard thinking that we are going to use them, thinking that they are going to be useful later on. Salts, brimstones, mana stones, you should always be using them, they are, uh, there are plenty on them. Now one of the most, <laughs> one of the biggest issues again that I have with this game is that running around on exploration the checkpoints are very far apart from each other. You have seats where you can plant uh, checkpoints that you can carry with yourself. Thing is that uh, they are very scarce. You have to be managing your health while you are exploring a little bit better. You have brimstones. Brimstones heal you. They function as same the kind of uh, stones that you had in the axles too. So use them through for regular exploration whenever you feel that you are far away from a checkpoint. Ideally you should be using the main source of healing, the one that you can get while uh, that you can your basic one, the one that you can upgrade. But once you have run out of that, 
and you are still struggling to get to the next point and you don't have any more seats to plant a resting point, then use your brimstones, they are going to save you that much more. You also have salts if you are a purely melee character that doesn't have spells. Salts, there's plenty of them throughout the game and they increase the damage that you deal by a huge amount. They really make a difference. Buffing your weapon in this game, it's just goat. Soul flaying enemies. You can soul flay enemies in any direction. You can upgrade your umbral lamp. We're getting close to the umbral guide. But there's the, the, the biggest enemy that we have in this game, uh, like in many other souls likes, it's gravity. You're, especially in the first areas of the game, you are going to encounter many enemies that are going to be blocking pathways that are going to be very annoying. And the dodging system in this game is kind of whiffy, so you have to be very careful. One thing that you can do is that you can soul flay an enemy and then move your stick, the one that you used to move, throughout different directions and you're going to soul flay that enemy into that direction, causing them to fall. And that's basically just one free enemy that you can kill. Very early, they have a lot of uh, health on their hit points, so it is the best idea to just throw them off ledges. Now, Umbral. Let's talk about that. Use Umbral as your second life. This works as some kind of uh, secure mechanic. If you die, you are going to be resurrected back in the world of Umbral. Although, when you heal an Umbral, you are going to get a Wither, so you have to deal damage to regain that Wither health. Again, that is not going to deplete, that is always going to be that, so you have to be very careful and choose wisely when are you going to attack. You can also use throwables or spells, any kind of source of damage that is going to uh, regain your health back again. Whenever you feel that you are messing up, whenever you feel that you are low on potions and whenever you feel that you are struggling with enemies, the best ideal thing is just let yourself be killed, like play it safe, play it safely, but instead of wasting potions, instead of wasting your resources, then might as well just play naturally and let the enemy kill you, because when the enemy kills you, you are going to regain all of your health back, provided that you deal damage to the enemy. So think of Umbral as a second life, it is more dangerous, it is far more dangerous, but it's also a resource that you can use at your advantage. Umbral is very scary. The enemies that you have in here, are very scary. Learning how to explore Umbral is key to exploration in here. <laughs> of course, pardon for the redundancy. That said, you cannot r remain on Umbral for that much time. There's a timer right there. Once that timer has reached his maximum, there's going to be a very powerful enemy that acts like a reaper and it's just basically going to delete you. You cannot kill this enemy because it is very powerful. Maybe you can if you are very try hard, but at this point there's more enemies that are going to be coming to you. You can also not heal while you have reached the maximum threshold for the umbral. You want to be looking for effigies. Effigies are going to get you back to the normal world. What I like to do, the best advice that, you, that I can give you is just explore umbral as much as you can Find that safe spot once you have once you know where the safe spot is. Whenever you feel that you're reaching the maximum threshold of time that you're able to remain on, on Umbral, go back to the effigy. Do not use the effigy immediately because trust me, you do want to explore Umbral. That leads me to the final advice that I have for you. Explore Umbral thoroughly. Ideally the exploration that you are going to have a loss of the fallen is going to be mainly on Umbral. It is safer to remain an Axiom and as a matter of fact, depending on the taste and how your eyes feast upon the candies that you have in front of you as visages and vistas, you're going to want to remain an Umbral or you're going to want to remain an Axiom. The graphics in this game some places can be breathtaking. That said, the items that you can get on Axiom, you can get them on Umbral. The items that you can get on Umbral, you cannot get them on Axiom. So, at first sight, the game exploration might be confusing because of how convoluted this thing is, but trust me, in reality, it's not. Just get familiar with one area. Once you have gotten familiar with that area, once you have gotten all of the shortcuts, then go back, backtrack, but when you're doing backtrack, do not backtrack an Axiom, backtrack an Umbral. 
and also first before you actually start doing exploration on Umbral, kill all of the enemies on Axiom. Axiom has enemies that are on Umbral as well, but Umbral has enemies that cannot be on Axiom. So before you start your exploration for backtracking on Umbral, you want to clear the area of Axiom because the enemies on Umbral, they are infinite, they are always going to be respawning. There's not many of them because the enemy designs are actually quite repetitive. But uh, once you are exploring, once you are backtracking, make sure that there's not more enemies that can be a hindrance to you, that can damage you. And make sure that you have deeply explored Umbral. There are not any places that you cannot go through Umbral, there are places that you cannot go through Axiom. So, in general, the best exploration that you can do is going to be on Umbral, but you have to understand how much time can you remain in there. You have to make it safer for you by cleaning all of the places in Axiom. And once that all has been said and done, Many of the items, requirement items to increase your healings, your, uh, there's many weapons, keys to visit new places, they are going to be here. So you have to explore Umbral, but if you're going to do so, make sure that everything is safe and sound, everything that is as secure as possible before you enter that. If you like the content, so like and everybody, super appreciate it. No one's told you today that you're a gorgeous and beautiful person. You're indeed a gorgeous and beautiful, beautiful person. I will be seeing you, goddamn gorgeous and beautiful people in the next one. Have a beautiful day and goodbye.